Today on Animal Airport, sniffer dog Maggie uncovers contraband. An American woman's hopes of a family reunion are dashed when her son is denied entry into the UK and his dog Teddy is stranded in transit. I'm just absolutely devastated. As their cages are broken into, some pensioners make an undignified arrival at the Ark. And rats are on the menu for the resident monitor lizards, whose table manners leave a lot to be desired. That's my knee. With nearly half a million flights a year, Heathrow is the busiest international airport in the world. As well as 65 million human passengers, each year around 40 million animals passing through the airport check in at the Animal Reception Center, affectionately known as the Ark. Animal Health Officer Lawrence is at Terminal 4 picking up a consignment of geriatric rhesus macaque monkeys which have flown in from the Netherlands. They're normally part of a breeding program um, going from one zoo to another. These monkeys will be heading to a private sanctuary in the UK which specialises in caring for elderly and rescued primates. They may be pensioners, but the boxes are substantial, and the padlocks mean business. It's back to the ark to make sure their travel documents are in order. Most dogs at Heathrow are just passing through, but Bruno, Anna and Maggie work here. They're sniffer dogs employed by the UK Border Agency. Slow any bags off your shoulders, please. They're important weapons in the fight against smuggling. And with around 180,000 passengers each day, they have plenty of work. Anna and her handler, Emily, are in the depths of Terminal 3. All the bags that come down from check-in, they come down the chute and then they get put in the bins here. So we search all the bags here and then they get taken off to the plane. So if we get any indications, we can have a look and see what's in the bag. So it's all just a big game for her. The tail's wagging, so she's happy enough. Go, go! A dog's nose is far more sensitive than a human's. Anna's trained to sniff out the special ink and paper used for banknotes. If there's money in any of those bags, she'll smell it. Upstairs in Arrivals, Bruno's looking for drugs. Come on, He's faster and much more efficient than any human search. Good lad, well done. With the conveyor belt clear, he heads to the customs channels to check the passengers. Just wait for me. Thank you. Just keep to the right hand side, single file. Before long, Bruno detects the presence of drugs. Still for me a moment. Good lad, well done. <laughs> this time, it's only a training exercise. Got caught. <laughs> So oh, the UK border agencies planted cocaine with a street value of £10,000 on one of its offices. 100 grams of, of cocaine detected by our dog. <laughs> Next time, it could be a real smuggler. In the loading bay, the monkeys have arrived and everyone's keen to say hello. Including animal health officer Anna. Little monkeys. They're very cute. Left them. Stop. Oh. That should be James and Anna. <gasps> Me? James and Anna. <laughs> oh, monkey. <laughs> James. Oh, Nana. 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 Oh, damn it. In the wild, rhesus macaques are found in Asia but these have spent the last 15 years in a Dutch animal sanctuary. 
Monkeys can carry diseases contagious to humans, so everyone wears a face mask. <laughs> These are coming in from the Netherlands. I believe the sanctuary that they're going to is uh, sort of like an old people's home for primates. The macaques have been in their boxes for five hours and are all in need of a drink. But the padlock keys are missing. Every now and then we have things arrive that have had padlocks attached to the boxes. Um, our main concern is to get some moisture in there. We don't know how, how long it is since they were last watered. Worst case scenario is we will just have to cut the locks off. Just so they can get some moisture. Keep going, keep going. Well. The macaques will be on their way shortly, so it's less stressful if they stay secure in their boxes. The Yark deals with over a quarter of a million exotic animals every year. Some end up staying as well as lemurs, toads and a crocodile. The Ark is currently home to two hungry monitor lizards. Come on in. Rats and mice are on the menu. There you go. Good bag. That's my knee. Nearly had me. Bit too slow, there. Eh? Monitor lizards' mouths are full of bacteria. A bite could turn very nasty very quickly. Um, and I've got teeth in there, and I've got quite a lot of power in those jaws, um, so it could do a lot of damage. They also use their tail for defence. <sighs> Only one of the monitor lizards appears hungry today. The other one hasn't taken any food yet, so must be asleep. Ah, yeah, quicker than that, mate. As the greedy one's likely to steal the other's food, Stuart has to separate them. Easier said than done. Oh, just stay there, mate, for me. Thank you. That's it, well done. They have very poor eyesight, but they have a great taste of the scent because they obviously get all, this, all the smells on their tongue. So they've got a great sense of smell, but movement, I can move my hand and they'll just think it's food. The lizards eat 10 rats a week and Stuart has to go through this rigmarole every other day. But the monitor lizards earn their keep. They're used to teach new members of staff how to handle dangerous animals. In Terminal 3, sniffer dog Maggie has made a discovery. She can smell cash in a passenger's hand luggage. The man says he has little money on him, but Maggie's not convinced. She follows the couple to the departure gate, where UK border agency officials escort them to a quiet area. Basically, the, these two passengers um, here have found to be carrying quite a large sum of money. The dog did indicate on them, but they told the dog handler didn't have any money. So it seems like they're trying to cover up the fact that they had money and thought, if I tell the dog handler, I haven't got any money, they'll believe me and I'll be able to get, get away with it. Anyone carrying more than eight and a half thousand pounds must declare it. The law is to prevent money laundering. It's an offence that can carry a prison sentence. The couple must now own up to exactly how much they have on them. They're going to have to be very quick, otherwise they're going to miss their flight. <laughs> the flight is being held up and the airline isn't happy. How long? How long? Because there's such a, a time pressure to get the passengers on their flight, it always gets really fraught with the airline. The couple are carrying £15,000, nearly double the legal amount. Eventually, they decide to leave the money behind 
and catch their flight. Yeah, considering she said she didn't have any, it's a, it's a, it's a decent quantity. Maggie is unaware of the significance of her find and is already back on the job. At the Ark, it's turning out to be an especially stressful day for Sharon. I've got a problem I don't know how to solve. What? Mr Hooper, who is Mr Jack with Jackson, yeah. is to being detained in immigration and is being deported tomorrow. Yes. And he's got all the documentation. So I don't know how to solve this one. Jared Hooper, an 18-year-old American refused entry at immigration, was due to meet his mother, Trina, and her boyfriend, Matthew. They were planning a family reunion, but now he and his dog, Teddy, have both been detained. Oh, I've been crying all the time. I'm, I'm absolutely devastated. I haven't seen my son in four months. I mean, he's 18, he's an adult now, but it's still my son. As Jared's mother, Trina, has moved to the UK, immigration is concerned Jared may want to stay in the country permanently. But Sharon's concerned about Teddy. She's joined by Karen, Teddy's travel agent. Without the original paperwork, I can't clear the pet. So the only thing I can suggest is you go to the airport and ask for immigration to bring... They won't bring me anything. They should... I've already tried. OK. Oh. They should be, should be able to bring you the paperwork through. I asked every time she called, I asked her and she said no. Nothing can be resolved till they have the dog's travel documents. And these are stuck in immigration with Trina's son, Jared. Do bear with me. I'm going to see if I can get through to someone. I would appreciate it because we walked and we have to get back yeah. to Liverpool. So you, you definitely want the dog? Yeah. Okay. Because no problem. I mean, we have to get back to Liverpool. Okay. Back to yep. the train and all that. No problem. That. Give me... Thank you so much. Thank you. Such a small dog as well. Not long, stressful thing in front of the dog like that. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get a good answer very shortly. Teddy is facing three weeks in quarantine or a flight back to the States without his owner. It's mid-afternoon and animal health officer Lawrence is picking up a dog that's just flown in from Florida via Iceland. The safe transportation of an animal isn't just about its welfare, it's about airport security. And as Fiorella the Dachshund emerges, there's been a close shave. Her box is far from secure. Is that locked? Is that door locked? The door's open. Lawrence is keen to get Fiorella away from the plane and into the safety of the van. I had a quick panic then as it was coming down because the box is so unsturdy that the door's actually quite loose. But thankfully the dog stayed in his box the whole time. We do occasionally have dogs that chew out their boxes, um, which is obviously quite a worry. If a dog was to get onto the runway, it could close the airport down, so um, it's quite serious. Lawrence is now waiting to pick up a consignment of reptiles and creepy crawlies, which have flown from South Africa via Zurich. I'm not aware of picking up cockroaches before. It's normally um, lizard snakes and tortoises. Fiorella may have tried to get out of her box on the plane, but with a thousand creepy crawlies sharing the van, she'd be wise to sit tight. Sharon is feeling the strain of dealing with emotional Trina, whose son is being held in immigration. At the moment, Trina has her two dogs for comfort. I've had them both since birth and they're real good with knowing my emotions and knowing how upset I am at this point, so they want to be close to me. Yeah. Sharon has managed to get Teddy's paperwork released by immigration. This is what came forward this morning in the document wallet. Another one. No, this is that. Like all dogs coming into the UK, Teddy must have a microchip and be vaccinated against rabies. But as they look through the papers, there's a problem. So, 
a certificate saying microchips, rabies vaccination, but we need to find out what vaccine was given. Because we haven't even got that. Thank you. Unless Sharon can sort something out, there are only two options for Teddy. Buy him a plane ticket back to the States or pay for his quarantine. If this dog hasn't got the required paperwork, ooh, what would your preference be, to send him back or to bring him forward into quarantine for 21 days? We can't afford the quarantine. OK, but it might cost quite a lot to send them back as well, so would it be your son paying for them? Pay. My son doesn't have the money to send him back either. Trina and her boyfriend have recently put their own two dogs through quarantine. They simply can't afford another huge bill. And I just don't know what to do now. I'm just absolutely devastated. In the loading bay, Fiorella the Dachshund and the four crates of insects and reptiles are about to be unloaded. Giant millipedes, cockroaches, garden spiders. And then his garden they come out of. Yeah, well, loads of interesting little creatures. Not my kind of thing, though. Thankfully, the creepy crawlies are still safely in their boxes, which is more than can be said for Fiorella. She's made a bid for freedom from her broken cage. This is why these boxes aren't allowed, because they're not really secure enough. I've got to leave here. If you don't. Luckily, she didn't perform her great escape out on the runway. A report needs to be filed on Fiorella's dodgy box. The Ark deals with all manner of animals, from birds to big cats, and from seals to snakes. Whatever the shape or size, all consignments are checked thoroughly before entering into the UK or continuing their onward journey. In the quarantine bay, manager Rob and deputy manager Susie are about to inspect the reptile and insect shipment. For Rob, getting this close to so many unusual animals is what makes his job worthwhile. Incredible. He's especially excited about this shipment. A very large millipede. Eh? It's amazing what people keep there, isn't it? Yeah. Susie, however, is not. I can see that they're interesting. Just not for me. <laughs> Shiny cockroaches. What's one cockroach laying in a case? Rice, lots of little cockroaches. It's different scorpions. Look at the tail on that. Yeah. That's probably a big fat female. It's just gross. Phoning from the United Kingdom from London Heathrow Airport. Sharon's on her third call to America, trying to verify Teddy's paperwork. Has it got the dog's microchip number on it? Teddy's been sat in his kennel for seven hours. Trina's son Jared is now in overnight detention, waiting to be sent back to the US. I just talked to him before I came back in. He's extremely exhausted. He still doesn't know when he's flying back. Kind of not a good day. <laughs> Sharon is well aware of how emotionally charged this case has become. She's received some documentation from America, but it's confusing. So she heads to the vets for help. We're just going to see if we've got enough information to let this dog go, but I don't think we have. The rules on dogs entering the UK are strict for good reason. They keep Britain free from rabies. She wasn't happy with this certificate. Well, no chip on it. As they sift through, it seems more paperwork is needed. After the disappointment of not seeing her son, it's upsetting for Trina. But even if we get all that tonight, I haven't got a certificate of tapeworm treatment. So even if I get the email in the next 10 minutes, the email, as soon as I can get you out of here is in 24 hours. For Trina, it's yet another blow. <laughs> In the dog wing, Fiorella the Dachshund, who escaped from her box earlier in the day, is about to go home. Hello. After three months apart, her owner is longing to see her. 
I know. I can't wait. I just hope she's all right and not freaking out because, <laughs> you know, she doesn't like being in the kennel and things like that. Come this way, please. Come on. But before she leaves, Purella and her box must be photographed so the airline that carried her can be issued a warning. So what I need is for her to stand as close to the box as possible. So you need to go a little bit further. There you go. Stay, stay, stay. Go back a little bit. Good girl. There you go. A dog's box needs to be long enough for its occupant to stand and turn in. Her box was far too short for her sausage dog frame. At last, it's time to go home. <laughs> Anne is keen the owner consigns to history Fiorella's dodgy box. I won't use it again. Yeah, sure. Fiorella's a well-travelled pooch, but it seems her frequent flyer days are over. She'll be living in Bournemouth. I really, really missed her. It's weird how you get attached to dogs like that. It's like a little kid, I don't know. She's my baby. Thank you. Sharon has spent much of the afternoon on the phone to the States. Now there's just one piece of paperwork missing, proof that Teddy's had his tapeworm treatment. In a last-ditch attempt to release him tonight, Trina will make a personal plea to her vet. Well, no, you do it. Because I've spoken to Alison twice now and she's fed up with me. Alison, this is Trina Jackson. I'm calling about Teddy. Oh, You've spoken with um, Sharon here at London Heathrow in the UK. I need that proof that Teddy had his tapeworm treatment. I need it faxed over like within the next two minutes. And I'm just, I mean, I've already been here six hours and to be perfectly honest, my, I just need to get out of here with him. It's been a long day for everyone. But at last, there's some good news. It's fine, you can go. This is the, the form we've been looking for. Thank you so much for all your help. I really appreciate it. What's his name? Anne's keen to get Teddy reunited with his family as soon as possible. He's actually in the box, so I'm not going to mess with him. I'm going to carry the box out as it is. Saves stressing. I'm not sure he'll come out and say hello to, to his mum. Teddy remains unaware of just how much trouble he's caused. Teddy bear, come here. Teddy, come here, Teddy. It's been an ordeal for Teddy and for Trina, whose son Jared never made it through immigration. At least they've been reunited. Safe and sound in a retirement home for primates, the geriatric macaques are now living out their remaining years. Trina's son was flown straight back to the US and they've yet to be reunited. But Teddy has settled into a new home in Liverpool. And Bruno, Anna and Maggie continue to combine work with pleasure, back on duty in the terminal buildings. <laughs>